What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, it's fine out here. This is the lesson for Doctree's version of Journeys Separate Ways. The song is actually tuned in drop D. To be a specific standard tuning with the drop D, which means that your low E string is going to be tuned down to D, and then your A string, D string, G string, B string, and your high E, it's going to stay in, in standard tuning. So... With that being said, let's jump right to the lesson. Okay, so the song starts with the iconic keyboard intro, and then after that, it's gonna go to this like fast-paced um, rhythm kind of thing. Okay, and one thing to keep in mind is that if you listen to the song, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of compression going on with the song. So um, what I did with this song is I tried to figure out parts by ear. And what I couldn't figure out, I ended up using the website called Cordify, which is a really cool website. And I am not, no, I am not being sponsored by them, but I highly recommend um, checking that out because it's a website on which you can pretty much, if you subscribe to the membership, you can uh, look up any song that you want and then you can pull it up and then the website will tell you what chords, um, what chords you need for the song. And you can also transpose and change the song to a different key and it'll tell you the chords that you need for you to play that specific song with that being said i ended up using that side and um i ended up using my ear and try to and i ended up doing the best that i could so that is what i'm i talk a lot let's jump right to that guitar intro <laughs> Okay, so the first part is a little bit tricky to understand, so I'm going to explain it as best as I can. What you're going to start with is you're going to start with one downstroke followed by uh, palm muting. And the palm muting is going to go down, up, down, up, and then you're going to hit two downstrokes. And on the second one, the second one is going to be a staccato. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, staccato means basically you're letting the note, um, you're not letting the note ring. So, so far we would have something like this. Okay. And then after that, you're going to have, um, you're going to have two downstrokes that uh, they're going to be a staccato. So you're not going to play them at the same time. You're going to play one by one which is going to go like this. Then you're going to go palm mute down up. Then you're going to hit those uh, two down strokes just like we did uh, to end uh, the sequence of, uh, of, this, of this part. So it's going to go. Okay. So if you put all of that together, it's going to sound something like this. And then it repeats. And after the second time, uh, and don't worry, there is going to be taps. So um, after I'm done uh, explaining each part, then we're going to go and then uh, I'm going to play it at full speed. And then you guys are going to see the taps down below. So after that, uh, after that intro, then you're going to go into these uh, like open power chords kind of thing, right? So after the second time, uh, it's going to go like this. Okay, so the first, um, the, after the intro, you're going to go into an open D. Then uh, you're going to count for about one measure. And then after that, you're gonna play that open D again. So it's gonna go one, two. So it's gonna go one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you're gonna go to your B flat power chord. Then you're gonna count for four. One, two, three, four. And then you're gonna go to and do this little, this little lick right here, which uh, it goes, um, which is basically you play it on the third fret of the D string, 
then you go to the second fret of the D string, and then you're gonna go to the third fret of the A string. So it's gonna go, and then the whole thing is gonna start again, meaning that that open chord part is gonna start again. So, so far uh, on that part, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and 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 and then after that, it's over. Then, uh, then you're gonna go into the verse, which is uh, which is gonna go. It's just gonna be just down strokes. Okay, so so far we got. So far we got. Right now for the second part it's um after after the after the second time around of the of this little lick that we have right here then it's gonna go into into um into the verse into the main verse and that verse is basically just gonna be downstrokes and uh, uh that pattern of those particular downstrokes is gonna go like this And that's all you have to do for the first, for the entire first verse. And uh, you're gonna do that for a while until it goes to the pre-chorus. Um, on that part that it goes, feeling that it's gone, can change your mind. So when you get to, when you're about to get to the part, it's gonna go like this. Feeling that it's gone, can change your mind. Um, well, so when he says, when he sings, feeling that it's gone, you're still in your open D and you want to come into that pre-chorus like this. So you're going to go down, up, down, up on your open D. Then you're going to go to your, uh, B flat. So yeah, B flat. Then to your C. Then to your G. And then you're going to go... hit your G then down up then you're gonna let it ring and then basically you kind of have to feel out the song as you play uh, on that particular part but so far we have then after that then it repeats it goes back to the B flat then to your C and then to your G, and, and then you're gonna end it like this. You're gonna hit your G once again, and then two, um, two strokes. I can be down, you know, two down strokes or, or down up, whatever feels is here, and you're gonna go like this. So the whole pre-chorus, the first pre-chorus, um, it's gonna go like this. So that, that part when, when it goes like that's when he sings uh love goodbye or something like that. 
right? So, so they want the chorus, once the pre chorus once again. Okay, now one more time with the tabs. Now for the chorus. The chorus is very simple. You're basically gonna have your open D, then you're gonna go to your C, then your B flat, then you're gonna go to your G for two counts, and then you're gonna go to your C for two counts, and then that same thing repeats again. So if you put all that together, it's gonna sound something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And that's basically it. Okay, so now let's do the same thing, but with tabs. Alright, after the first uh, chorus is done, then it's going to go back into that intro part that we played at the beginning, which goes... And just like the beginning, that part's going to repeat twice. And now it's going to go back to the first verse, and just like the first verse, um, the guitar is, 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 is basically going to be doing that. The only difference is that there is a different guitar on the second verse, right? There is also, um, excuse me, there is another, uh, there's a second guitar added to the verse and that second guitar is playing open chords to make the sound sound interesting and uh, fuller to a certain extent. So uh, as soon as the second verse kick start, kick starts, then you're going to have that open D and that open D it's going to play for about four measures and a half. and after it's done playing for you know for a while, then it's gonna go, um, then it's gonna go to the C, then to the B flat, then it's gonna go to this lick, and uh, keep in mind that after that, it's um, when it comes into the C and to the B flat and everything, it's I think each chord it's being played for about two counts, so. We have the open D for, uh, for about four measures and a half, and after that it's one, two, one, two. Then it's gonna go back to this leg that we did in the beginning, and then it's gonna go. Um, then it's gonna play an open D again for two counts. One, two, to the C, two, B flat, then. Um, we're gonna play another lick. It's gonna, this lick is a little, uh, is actually kind of different, and uh, it's gonna go like this. So it's gonna go um, three on the third fret of the D string, two on the second fret of the D string, then you're gonna go to the uh, to uh, the fifth fret on the A string, then you're gonna go to the third fret on uh, the A string. So it, um, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, and then it's gonna go back to the open D. Then you're gonna have this lick again. 
and now you're gonna go into the into the pre-chorus and i understand that sounds confusing and um again this is what i this is what i, I hear in the song uh and you kind of have to if you want to play that part you kind of have to listen to um easy hell when she's singing the uh, when she's singing the second verse and uh the guitar player doesn't start he doesn't start uh playing that c until um easy hell sings pain for the second time right because she is um because that particular part it starts playing when she goes uh confusion and pain 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 Okay, and then it is gonna go into the pre-chorus. So I hope that makes sense. But if it didn't, let's play the same thing with tabs so it can make sense. Perfect. So now it's gonna go to uh, the chorus, and then after the chorus, it's gonna go to the solo. Now the solo is gonna is very simple, and it's gonna sound like this. No worries, if you don't have a whammy bar, then I'm gonna tell you other ways that you can that you can basically play these parts, all right? So it's gonna start with, uh, it's gonna, uh, the guitar player, it's gonna slide to the, it's gonna slide to the seventh fret of uh, the D string, then it's gonna play the seventh fret on the G string. Then it's gonna go to the ninth fret of uh, the G string and the tenth fret of the G string back to the um, seventh fret of the bass string. So, so far we have. Then after that, uh, if you have a, a Floyd Rose like I do, then you're gonna, pl you're gonna wanna play the ninth fret of the G string. And then you want to move your wa your whammy bar down, right? So that way you can lower the pitch. If you don't have a whammy bar, what you can do is you can hold the note for about a microsecond or two, and then you want to slide it. It's not going to sound the same, but it'll sound similar. So so far we have. If you don't have a whammy bar, if you do. Okay, after that part, then it's gonna go to the ninth and 10th fret of the G string, and then in, then you're gonna do a pre-bend. Um, so basically, you're gonna, basically, we would have something like this. And then you wanna hit the seventh fret of the G string as you're coming down. And uh, basically what a pre-bend is, is uh, you, wanna, you wanna bend the note up to the note that you wanna play, and um, once uh, you have the bend or you have your fingers placed or you're bending the string where you're supposed to be bending, then that's when you wanna hit it and then that's when you wanna um, play the string so you can fully uh, finish that particular bend. In this case, we wanna bend up to the 12th fret and once you've, and you're only gonna know this if you've been playing for a while. If not, you know, just try to do your best and uh, just try to get used to, and what I mean by doing your best is 
um, there's this cool exercise that you can do which you can play one note and you can bend uh, the string to frets below so that way you can uh, start training your ear but anyways um, if you don't you can always play it like But I like to play it as best as um, as best as I can, so that way it's close to the song. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this is what we're gonna have all together. And then you want to play the seventh fret on the, G, on the G string when you finish. So all together we would have this. I'm sorry, we would have. Okay, so after that part, then you're gonna go into what that is once again. They are uh, you're gonna play the ninth fret and tenth fret on the G string, and then you're gonna you you want to play this lick, which is basically you're gonna you're gonna play the 12th uh, fret on the G string, then hammer on to the 14th fret of the G string, then you're gonna pull up to the 12th fret of the G string, um, which then you're gonna pull up to that um, 10th fret of the G string. So, then you go, and then you're gonna hit the 12th fret on the G string again. So you're gonna go, And then uh, you're gonna go into this part, which is basically the 10th fret on the G string. Then you're gonna, then you're gonna um, hit the 9th fret on the G string, and then you're gonna bend a half step down. It's, got, it's actually gonna be a, a full ha um, step and a half of a bend. So we're just gonna go. Or you could slide if you like. You can slide um, to the ninth and the tenth fret. That's a possible option. Or you can play it like this. As long as you're bending the note up to this note, and then you want you want to hit the ninth fret of the G string, then the seventh fret of the G string, and then um, the seventh fret of the D string. So you would have. So the whole uh, little part is supposed to sound like this. Now that entire part all together. Now after that, it's gonna go. Uh, it's basically gonna play an octave of uh, of that melodic part that plays in the beginning of the solo. So with that, um, you're gonna go into the um, 19th fret of the D string, or you want to slide to the 19th fret of the D string. Then you're gonna play the 19th fret of, um, or actually, I'm sorry. I get confused, I apologize. Let's start over again. So for that uh, second part of the solo, you're gonna wanna slide to the 17th fret of the um, of the string. Then you're gonna play, then you wanna play the 17th fret of the G string. And then you wanna play the, uh, the 19th fret and then the 20th fret of the G string. And then back to the 17th fret of the D string. So all together that part is gonna be like this. Right? And then now it's gonna go into this um, natural harmonic that is that is gonna be located in the, um, right here in the fifth fret. And uh, I don't have time to explain natural harmonics right now. But if you don't, I, I would uh, I would highly suggest looking up a video on how to 
uh, how to play them. Uh, long story short, what you want to do is you want to place uh, your any finger on, um, you're not going to be pressing on the fret, but you're just going to place uh, your finger just right in front of the first string over, um, over the fifth fret, okay? And uh, it's going to be in between, um, it's going to be located in, uh, it's going to be just basically right over the fret, right over this particular uh, this particular line okay and then you want to take your whammy bar and you want to bring it down if you don't have a whammy bar or that harmonic just feels uncomfortable for you for no reason you can play that note which is gonna be on um, if you have that um, if you have uh, I guess uh, 22 frets like I do then you want to play it on the 22nd fret of the high E. And then you want to slide it. Now, if you don't um, if you don't have 22nd frets or you can't play it, what you can do is you can hit a pinch harmonic. And once again, I don't have the time to go into pinch harmonics right now. Uh, but if you know about uh, pinch harmonics and if, or if you want to learn, then I would... I suggest uh, looking up a video on how to play uh, pinch harmonics. But if you know how to play pinch harmonics, you can also hit a pinch harmonic on the 19th fret of the G string. And then just slide it down. So there are many, there are a couple of ways to play this part. Um, so once again, I'm gonna go over the, the, uh, all three ways of the way how we could play this part. So uh, let's start with the first, um, the first way, which is with the natural harmonic. Now this part with the um, with the high note on the 22nd fret. Now this is what it would sound like if we hit a pinch harmonic on the 19th fret of the G string. All right, so after the high note, we're gonna go into this part. Which is which is gonna be the 19th fret, the G string, followed by the 20th fret on the G string. Then you're gonna go to the 10th fret of the G string, and you wanna bend the 10th fret up to the 12th fret, and then you wanna pull off to the 9th fret. So it's gonna sound like this. And then we're gonna go into this lick, which is basically gonna be on the 10th fret of the G string, hammer onto the 12th. Pull up to the 10, pull up to the 9, um, hit the 10, um, fret of the G string again, then the same idea. Hammer to the 12, pull up to the 10, pull up to the 9, same idea. So, slowly it's played like this. Then we're gonna go into this fast run, which is gonna go. It, which is basically gonna be played on, it's all, all of it is gonna be on the G string, all right? So it's gonna go 9, 12, 10, 9, 12, 10, 9, 14, 12, 10, 14, 12, 10. Once again, slow. Then we're gonna go back into the into this uh, lick. But we're gonna, we want to play this uh, little little um, legato little run just once. This is gonna go in the tenth fret. Um, hammer to the ten. I'm sorry. Hammer to the twelve. Pull up to the ten. Pull up to the nine. Then hit the ten again. And this time um, we're gonna repeat this part that goes. Which is gonna be the 10th fret. Then um, you want to hit the 9th fret of the G string, and then you want to bend it a half step, and then you're gonna play the 7th fret on the G string. So, okay. So once again, the part is 10th um, fret. 
the ninth fret on the G string and then hit the ninth fret, bend it a half step, and then play the seventh fret. And then instead of coming back to this note, then we want to hit the open A string and then do a dive bomb. All right. If you don't have the Wami bar, what you can do is you can hit your A note and then you can just slide it. So the whole part, once again, it's like this. Or Okay, so now let's do the same thing but with tabs. Now, after the solo, the song is going to go into a break or somewhat of a bridge. For now, let's call it a bridge. And during this particular part, uh, I like to add a lead guitar part that is not really in the song. It's just in my guitar cover. And the reason why I like to do that is because I like to add my own personality into uh, the songs and uh, pieces that I end up working with. So that particular part, it's gonna go like this. You wanna bend um, the B string on the 16th fret up to the 18th fret. And then we take the same concept and we bend the B string on the 18th fret up to the 20th fret. And we wanna hold each bend for about four beats. And then after that, I'm basically gonna run down the are gonna run up the minor scale. Usually we would begin on the 10th fret, but because we are in drop D tuning, we start from the 12th fret instead of the 10th fret. Um, and if you watch my video, I usually I started on the 10th fret because when I recorded that particular part, my guitar was tuning in standard. Uh, somehow when I ended up recording the song, I didn't start from, uh, you know, from start to finish. I started from different parts and then I worked my way around it. Uh, and the same thing when I, when I ended up filming it. So, um, all right, so now we are going to go into the bridge or this little break that happens after the solo is over for now. Let's call it a bridge. Uh, there's this particular lead guitar part that I add that is not really in the song except in the video and that's because I like to add my own personality into the pieces that I play or into, into in this case, into the covers that I do. So that particular part is going to go like this. So we're going to bend the 16th fret on the second string up to the 18th fret of the second string. Then we want to take the same concept and we want to bend the 18th fret of the second string up to the 20th fret. And we want to hold each bend for about four beats, okay? And now after that, um, we are gonna run down the minor scale. And if you watch my video, I started on I start the scale on the tenth fret, which is normally where you're supposed to start it if you're tuned to standard. But um, when I recorded the song, uh, my guitar was tuned to standard during the recording. Um, when I recorded the, the solo. After the solo, I, I ended up um, dropping my guitar down to down to D. So if you watch that video for that particular part, when I ended up running down the scale, it's because my guitar was in standard tuning. That's why I started on the 10th fret. But because this lesson is in drop D, we are gonna start, um, usually the, 
that same note would be two frets higher. Anyways, so you're gonna start, if you're in drop D tuning, you're gonna start where I am. Um, and if you take your guitar and happens to be in, in, in the standard, then you would play it up to that. But the whole song is in D, so I'm teaching you in D. Anyways, uh, the scale begins like this. You're gonna go to your um, 12 and 14 fret, then you're gonna play 12, 14, 15. Then you're gonna go uh, to the fifth string, and you're gonna go 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 13. So you're gonna play this twice. And then you wanna move to the D string, and you wanna play the 10, 12, 14 twice. Then you wanna move to the G string, and you wanna play uh, 10, 12 and 14 also twice and then you're gonna want you want to move to you're gonna move down to the 9 10 and 12 and then you're gonna move up to the 10 11 13 and you want to play this um, this particular part three times not to the uh, the fourth um, the last song that I repeat, so what I do is I end up going 9, 10, 12, and then I end up playing 10, 11, 13, back to 11, back to 10, back to 12, 10, 9, and then back to 10, 12, and then I'm gonna play 11, I'm sorry, I'm gonna play 10, 11, 13, back to 11 back to 10 I know that sounded confusing but basically it, it should sound something like this now the whole thing from the top the whole scale from the top it should sound like this And then you want to finish it with um, the 11, 13, and 15 of, um, you want to play those notes on the B string. So the whole, and you want to, and to make it sound cool, you want to play the whole thing palm muting. So it's going to sound like this, if you play it palm muting. Right? And that is how this leg is going to go. Let's play the same thing, but with taps. Now, after I play that lead part, then we're basically, um, I think this part starts playing when uh, Izzy Hell starts singing, I still love you, babe, something like that. And the way how that's gonna go is gonna go like this. gonna go into that little lick right here and it basically it's gonna repeat four times so the first three times is gonna go like this so the 15th fret on the second string to the 17th fret of the first string then we're gonna go to the 15th fret of the first string and down to the 13th fret of the first string then back to the 15 of the second 17 of the first Back to 15 of the first to 13 of the first. So, so far, we should have something that sounds like this. Oh, 
on the third time, I mean on the fourth time, the final time around, it's gonna go 15 of the first to 13 of the first, and it's gonna end on the 17th fret of the first string. Uh, there are many ways that you could play this note of uh, what I'm doing in the video. I am actually bending uh, the 15th fret up to the 17th fret. Right, so when she and remember this part starts when she starts singing I still love you da, 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 da. Okay. and that is uh, the lead part for the bridge. Now the rhythm part for that um, for that bridge, it's it's gonna be very simple. It's gonna be your open D, then you're gonna go to your F. So it's gonna be your open D to your F to your B flat, and you're gonna go to your G. Then it's gonna repeat, but this time it's gonna be your D, your C your uh, B flat, and then you're gonna go to your A. And every chord, it's you're gonna hold it, I mean, you're gonna let it ring for four beats, right? So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, 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 Right, and then it's, there's gonna be a buildup that's gonna be happening, and then it's gonna go to the chorus, and uh, then it's gonna go uh, towards the end of the song. So let's play this part with tabs. Right, so now after after that bridge uh, what, or whatever you want to call it, we are going to go into the chorus and then uh, the chorus is going to play twice and then after the chorus we're, we're going to go back to the intro part and then after the intro part you're going to have the ending which is going to sound something like this. Okay, so uh, in order for the ending to make sense, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna play that intro part again, and then we're gonna play the ending. Um, the ending is basically just an open chord, and then followed by um, one open D, staccato, and then you wanna pause it for about four beats, and then you wanna play it again, and when you're letting it ring out, you're gonna let it, you're gonna let the open D ring out for about two measures, which, which is, um, gonna be followed by that open D a staccato again, okay? Um, so let's play it from that intro part. So and once again, I'm gonna play it slowly and I'm gonna play the ending with it. So that way you can see how it makes sense. Three, two, one. Wanna wait? One, two, three, four, the drama ski king, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. Okay, that's basically the end of the song. So let's play this part one more time with tabs.
Thank you so much for watching. If you like rock and roll and if you like hot rock, then subscribe to my video. And if you want me to make more videos like this, showing you how to play another song or showing you how to play cool guitar tricks or anything else, then leave a comment below and let me know. And as for me, I will see you in the near future.